Hi, everybody. So um, the next topic I want to look at in the uh, this review of probability is the idea of independence. Uh, this is a very fundamental idea, and it captures the notion that uh, two events are independent if the occurrence of one tells you nothing about the likelihood of the occurrence of the other. They're unlinked from each other. Um, in real life, uh, this is uh, maybe a hard thing to pin down, but it's fundamental to a lot of... Um, so it's a fundamental assumption in a lot of uh, uh, statistical methods. So um, let's take a look. So as I said, uh, two events, uh, A and B, are independent if the probability of them both occurring is the product of their probabilities. And another way to think about that in terms of conditional probability is to say that the probability of A occurring, given the fact that B occurred, is the same as the probability of A occurring. So knowing that B occurred tells you nothing about whether A is likely to occur or not. So the classic example of uh, independent events are successive coin flips. If you know that the first coin flip is heads, that tells you nothing about whether the second coin flip is a head. Uh, an example of events that are probably not independent might be the chance that it's going to rain. Uh, if the chance that it's going to rain today is high, then the chance that it's going to rain tomorrow is probably also higher than it would have been because the weather on successive days is related to one another. Um, just to sort of remind you of some definitions and, and check to make sure that everything here is, uh, is A-OK, -okay, let's just verify that these two conditions are the same. So if the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B, then that tells you that the probability of A is the probability of A intersect B over the probability of B. But that, by definition, is the probability of A given B. So um, if the probability of A intersect B equals P of A times P of B, then the probability of A is equal to the probability of A given B. And conversely, if the probability of A given B, which is by definition P of A intersect B over P of, P of B, is equal to P of A, then it's multiplied by P of B, and you see that P of A intersect B is P of A, P of B. So um, these two conditions for independence are, in fact, the same. Uh, let's look at a very standard example, which you've probably seen before. So suppose that our sample space X consists of sequences of heads and tails of length n. So you could think of this as the set consisting of heads or tails, its Cartesian power. So a typical element of it, a typical event, might be a sequence like heads, tails, heads, 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 for example. This would be a typical element of the set X. And let's suppose that the probability of getting a head in position I is P, and the positions are independent. So in other words, the fact that you got a head on the third flip is independent of whether or not you got a head on the fifth flip. They're all independent. And of course, the probability of tails in position I is 1 minus P. So if you have a sequence, if your event has let's say, k heads and n minus k tails, then the probability of that event using independence is p to the k, 1 minus p to the n minus k. Now, this is the probability of a particular sequence of heads and tails. What's the probability? Let's let P of K N be the chance of K heads in N flips. 
Well, then each possible way of getting k heads in n flips has probability p to the k 1 minus p to the n minus k. But there are n choose k different ways of getting those k heads, depending on where in the sequence they lie. So this is called, this gives you a probability distribution. If you fix n, this gives you a probability distribution on the set 0, 1, up to n, where you have this formula. And um, this is called the binomial distribution with parameters p and n. And so P of KN, this is the chance of K heads in N flips of a coin with probability of heads equal to P. Now let's look at a continue, an example uh, of independence with a continuous distribution. And in this case, we're going to think about our uh, thermometer example. So we're going to make um, we're going to measure the temperature. We have some true temperature. T zero is the true temperature, and uh, x, which is T minus T zero. T is the is the um, temperature on the thermometer, and the probability that um, that absolute value x is less than delta. So in other words, the probability that the error in your measurement is less than delta is given by the normal distribution. So there's some variance parameter, and we're, it's given by the integral from minus delta to delta of e to the minus x squared over 2 sigma squared dx. Now suppose we make n measurements. And suppose the errors are independent. Well, then the probability of these events is the product of the probabilities. So the probability, let's say the measurements are uh, t1 up to tn, and the errors xi are ti minus t0, and so the probability of the event that all the errors are less than delta is the product of the probabilities of the individual ones. And that works out to be 1 over sigma squared of 2 pi to the n. And we would have a multiple, we would have separate integrals for the separate variables but we're going to combine all of those integrals together. And we would have e to the minus x1 squared over 2 sigma squared minus x2 squared over 2 sigma squared minus all dx d1 out to dx dn. And so this is what's called the multivariate Gaussian distribution. And we can rewrite the exponent here as the norm of the vector x1 up to xn squared over 2 sigma squared dx1 up to xn. So um, more generally, uh, the probability that this error vector lies in some subset u inside Rn, the probability of this event 
is 1 over sigma square root of 2 pi to the n. And then it's the multiple integral e to the minus norm x squared over 2 sigma squared dx, um, at where you think of this as a multiple integral. So um, the, uh, the independent errors of, a, of uh, n independent measurements, each one of which is Gaussian distributed, is given by this uh, sum of squares term in the exponent. So if you want to think about what that's saying, it's saying that uh, if, the, if the errors, as the errors fall in a larger and larger sphere, the probability drops off like e to the minus the radius of that sphere squared uh, divided by twice the variance. Let's also give an example of variables that are not independent. And for that, I'm going to introduce a probability distribution in two variables where the uh, exponent is e to the minus x squared minus xy minus y squared. Let, we could put the two sigma squared over there, dx dy. So the probability that a point xy belongs to the set u is this integral. And there is a normalizing constant out here, which I, would play the role of the 1 over sigma squared of 2 pi that I'm not going to try to figure out what it is. Now, this function, x squared plus xy plus y squared, if you draw its level curves, what you get are a sequence of ellipses centered at the origin. And so now if you ask, what's the probability distribution, let's say, of x given y, um, well, you can see here that the two variables are not independent because suppose I fix x, or let's say I fix y. So if I fix y here, then you see that x has its peak, the probability of x has its peak somewhere over there. Whereas if I fix y here, the probability of x as I go across has its peak somewhere over here. So the probability of x given y depends on y. If y is um, up here, the, the prob if y is up here, the probability x is more likely to be positive. If y is down here, x is more likely to be negative. So in this situation, x and y are not independent. They are correlated. Which is just a way of saying that they're not independent. Uh, and you can see that because um, for instance, if we whoops, if we were to draw this distribution, the upper distribution, we, it would have a bump somewhere uh, to the left of the origin. And if we were to draw this one, it would have a bump somewhere to the right of the origin. So in particular, the condition for independence is the probability of x given y is supposed to equal the probability of x. It's supposed to be independent of y, and we can see that it's not. So there's an example of um, some not independent random variables. And if you want a fancier picture, uh, here's a little bit better, better drawn picture that shows on the left the probability distribution. Uh, it's got a hump like a normal curve, but with elliptical uh, level curves. And on the right, you see the level curves, and they have this property that I mentioned that uh, the, the peak, if you go across here, you have the peak over here. And if you go across here, you would have the peak over there.